Welcome back in, everybody. We're going to get started with the second game of Cybercats versus Team Sexy. Team Sexy rightly coming in for that one from the uh, EGB favorites in that first game. They had a host guard pick out of absolutely nowhere. No one was expecting it. Chira did a great job in the lane of trying to control it, but once it got into the mid game, the team fight started coming out as well. There was just no way that they could stop it. And we saw in the end Moonlight coming through 8, 2, and 8. The Ursa Burr there as well, 2, 2, and 6. Looking really good, keeping pace with the net worth and found some good key kills, some good team fights there as well. And Cybercats, even with the Nagasaren, just could not fight into it. And yeah, a heart coming out, the, the Manta style being there, the Blood Thumb being there, the Butterfly for the Nagasaren still wasn't enough to stop the Hurry Furry Scurry Burr. And we'll see now coming into game number two. If they're going to be able to pull it out of the bag, you know, and force it to a three game series here, Cybercats, or if Team Sexy, are they going to take the first win of the division? And what a better, you know, how do you start better than that? You absolutely don't. And maybe setting them up to go on a bit of a run. Looking at the teams in it as well, in Division 2, just uh, as I get the page up to take a look. You know, you, you do have some, again, some quality teams. Um, Namiga even replacing Kiritich with uh, Violent. You know, they've still got Malreen, Vazia, Hellscream, and Sobad. So they are looking, uh, to me, like the favorites to go up. But it could be anybody's you know, anybody's game coming through. Alekum Nihau, they looked pretty good yesterday, yesterday against Into the Breach uh, in a third-party tournament. They were looking... I mean, the first game was pretty shaky. But they were able to drag it out. Unfortunately, they didn't move on. But Alekum Nihau, you know, a good contender in this division as well. Team Sexy, we've already seen them starting off on the right foot. Cybercats, so if they get themselves in the right frame of mind, they can be, you know, a force to be reckoned with. So we'll see if they're going to be able to get themselves back into it in game number two. Um, the X, Y, and T stack, I don't know if they got a name at all. If Or if they're just sticking with X, Y, and T. Uh, no, they have. I, I'm pretty sure they have. Let me just see if I can find it. While we're doing that, you know, we've got Sigma YNT, which is uh, you know, Corruptible, Queasy, Vanscore, For You, and Dark Lord. That's not a bad stack either. Uh, potentially mid, yeah, I'd say mid table looking at it. Maybe, you know, pushing to the upper table. Navi Jr. and No Sorry as well. No Sorry with Donosric, Dodron, Dominic, Yond, and Black Archangel. Again, some more well known tier two players. So, this division looking incredibly, incredibly competitive. And again, Alekum Nihau with Palintimos, Hayes, Shagarat, Bika, and Murray. Um, Again, coming together as a team for the Eastern European qualifiers as we get ourselves into the draft. So coming right out of the gate here, Team Sexy get the Disruptor and the Beastmaster. You know, Cybercats, they pick up the Rubik. We see the Death Prophet, the Nature's Prophet, the Broodmother, and the Monkey King this time being taken away. Ten seconds remaining. So, Team Sexy, Five seconds again remaining. with a good start going back for the Beast and the Disruptor. I see, though, I mean, the Rubik's been playing the Disruptor as good as the, some Disruptor players with the spells that it's been able to steal. They go straight for the Pudge. Ooh. Radiant team ban. So what, potentially looking for... Do you ban out the Crystal Maiden here if you're Team Sexy? Maybe, yeah, the... Yeah, they straight up just ban out the Crystal Radiant Maiden. Team ban. The Clockwork is still there. Could have go for something a little bit out of left field as well, like a Ventual Spirit to purr with the Pudge. Uh, the Rubik obviously more important to them. It probably doesn't get through the second phase if they don't pick it up. But yeah, with the, the Pudge being revealed like this. I mean, they could have kept the Pudge Crystal made until the second phase. Really, picked up a... What, pick up the offlaner? Because you maybe don't want to give away your mid laner here either just yet. Yeah, Team Sexy, you see the Pudge, straight away you take out the Crystal Maiden, you don't even give it a second thought. So, Team Sexy, what's going to be their next ban? And again, just looking through, uh, let's see if I can find this X, Y, and T's name. It's not that important, it's just, it's for my benefit, really. <laughs> Um, 
But yeah, all, all the teams coming through in Division 2 here. It's going to be a very competitive environment, I do believe. Um, and it's going to be... I'm really match. interested to see who, who's going to actually move through. They, they've called themselves money makers, So probably just waiting to be updated on... Excuse me, on Liquipedia. As the Ench gets banned out here as well as the Anti-Mage. Cybercats. Who else would you want to look to ban? Maybe, I mean, you've already taken away Ten the Nature's Prophet on the side of Team Sexy, the Death Prophet on your side. Um, Lesh Five could be a good pusher. Remaining. Someone that, uh, I mean, even the Drow Ranger, it, okay, if you get caught out by the Pudge, if the Pudge is looking for a Brilliant blink. Team ban. But just being able to, to sit and right-click him down from a distance, maybe the Sniper as well for Team Sexy. And I wonder if Jesu plays it. Let's take a look at what Jesu's been playing. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Oh, where's my cursor go? There we go. To the Pro Tracker, if the website ever wants to work. Um Radiant team. Yeah, okay. They ban out the Enigma. Again, another good push hero. So Cybercats, not really going to have any of those zoo heroes as Team Sexy go back to the Lich. So, okay, they've maybe been practicing with hero. Do they want to go for a Slark up against the Pudge? Lich Slark is a really good combo. Let's take a look what Jesse has been playing. So. A couple of Abaddon games, so carry Abaddon coming through. Yeah, the Slark game Five there as well. Anti-Mages, but yeah, there's a good Dio couple of Slark games in here. So, it's going to be Cybercats. They go for the Jakiro. Good setup with the Ice Path. You've got the Slow from the Dual Breath here as well. Push potential onto Towers with the, the Liquid Fire and Deep Push with the Dual Breath on the Creep Waves. Cybercats. Hmm. Five what else do you want to pick up now? So looking for an off laner and a mid laner here. Coming up against the Beastmaster. With that push. Do you want a bit more? I'd still say like the Lash. Pulse Nova's really good. Coming through the Beastmaster army. You've got tower taking potential with the Diabolic Edict. Some good team fight and kills that, you know, the if you get a good lightning storm. Into the split earth in the mid lane as well. It's a great setup for kills. It's just a great hero here, I think. The anti mage has already been banned out as well. Uh, what else? Off lane. Uh, if you want to go back for the primal beast on DK focus, that is available. But let's take a look at DK. Yeah, the Dragon Knight is still here as well. Um, they actually went for something a little bit different yesterday. Went for the, the Necrophos carry. They still have... The Lycan could still be picked up as well if they want to pick that one out and put pressure on the lanes that way. So, yeah, no, it's not bad out, right? Yeah, no, the Lycan is still here if they want to go for that. And obviously with the Crystal Maiden ban being taken out, uh, Team Sexy couldn't take out the Lycan if they wanted to. They had to make a choice between the Ench, the Enigma, and the Lycan. So Cybercats... What's it going to be for them? Could even go for both the Lycan and the, the Dragon Knight if they wanted to. But Cybercats, they are going to be thinking about this coming through the reserve time. Uh, meanwhile, Team Sexy... What do they want to be going for? I'd still say the Slark. You know, I don't, I don't think the Slark's a bad pick. At least not yet, anyway. Okay, it's going to be the Doom. Oh, Doom might actually change it. So it's not going to be the pushing off lane to come through here for Cybercats. You do want a bit more of a fight. You want a lot of lane harass to come through from the Scorched Earth as well. Uh, I wonder if he picks up any early points in the Infernal Blades. It can take the creeps away from the Beastmaster. I'm surprised we've not seen more Dooms and Night Stalkers coming out when the Beastmasters do get picked up because they can both deal with the Ancients when the Helm of the Overlord comes out. I think it's the level 15 talent for the Doom, if I do believe. Let me just make sure. Is it level 15 or level 20? Uh, no, yeah, level 15. So you do give up the 10% Scorched Earth move speed. 
But being able to deal with the Ancients when the Helm of the Overlord comes out, you know, it really does make Beastmaster's game that little bit harder. Especially if you're going to match the rotations, potentially look for the kills. And uh, just stop him from being able to put the the solo lane pressure onto the, the off lane or his off lane. Yeah, the Doom can, once that level 15 comes out, can solo deal with the Beastmaster. So, Team Sexy, again, using a lot of reserve time to think about this one. What do you want to be picking up to fight into it? Um, yeah, and again, the Doom, if he gets the Doom off Dying onto the Slark, back. it's going to be the Huskar again. Okay, so they go back for it. Do Cybercats, I mean, there's going to be two bands before they get to it. So Cybercats, are they going to be able to get that Invoker out again? Do they even want to go for the Invoker here? Could go for the OD. You know, the Husker, what's he going to do? He, he jumps himself in and gets Astraled. Five seconds remaining. Uh, Viper, Radiant that might be the next two bands back. here from Team Sexy as well, the Viper and the Invoker. Back. Yeah, Viper, if you're going to go for that Husker, you have to take the Viper out. So Cybercats... What are they worried about? I mean, again, the Ursa is still there, and the Pudgy, even when he's got, like, he could have 50 Flesh Heap stacks, he's still going to get rid No, the Ursa got spun out. Okay. So take it through remaining. in the second phase of bands. It's just me not paying attention. Five seconds remaining. Um, Morphin's a really good one as well up against the Pudge, because the Morphin gets the Aghanim Scepter, morphs into the Pudge, and takes away 40% of his stats resistance. Radiant team when he gets the stat steal, so even though it doesn't seem like it, you know, it is still a really good hero against the Pudge, and you know, Cybercats don't want to play up against it here. They've got themselves just over 30 seconds here to think about this final pick, to think about the mid laner. And do they want to go back for the, uh, probably not going to be the AA mid, I mean, you could run like the Jakiro and keep the AA as a support. Ten seconds remaining. But yeah, Cybercats, do they want to go back for the Invoker? Five seconds remaining. We'll find out. Ten seconds left on this pick as well. So, what is it going to be? I mean, Chira played really good on the Invoker. Is it the Invoker OD Sniper? Sniper? Hmm. Okay, I mean, if he gets jumped on, he's going to be in danger. But it's he still plays from range, you know? Slark. And it is going to still going to be the Slark. So the Slark has to watch out for the Doom. Uh, but grouping up with the Lich, you know, it's, there's some good pullback potential. Yeah, it's going to be Chira on the Sniper as well. So there's some good pullback potential with the Lich-Slark combination. You know, you get the lockdown with the, the Sinister Gaze to get the drive back in. The, the Ice Blast slows him down, and the Slark comes in with a Pounce. Can do a lot of damage. And DK Focus might have to be careful in the early levels. But Cybercats, they are behind. You know, they, they need to be um they need to be coming back with this one. They need to be getting themselves back in. It's a good lineup to do it, as long as they don't get jumped. I think if they're gonna get jumped by Team Sexy, and there's a lot of jump ability coming out here. Cybercats might find this game pretty darn tough. Um, yeah, Team Sexy, they were fully in control from the mid-game onwards in that last one as well. So we'll see if they're going to be able to keep themselves in control coming into game number two, or whether Cybercats, can they pull it back in their favour? Uh, I think after that last one... I don't know. I think I still like Cybercats lineup, and I've seen them. They, they do have the potential to win this one. So I think I'm going to be back in Cybercats again. You know, maybe dropping the the caster curse on them here, but I think if they get some good momentum going this time around, they they have the heroes to deal with these fights. So uh, yeah, I think they have the potential to come back and bring this one to a one-one. Meanwhile, Team Sexy looking to close it out. They want this first win in the division, and. Uh, before we get into it, guys, a quick words from our sponsors over at EGB. Check it out, and we'll get into game number two. Bets on esports, bets on streamers, impressive bonus system, welcome bonus up to $600, cashback, artifacts, regular promotions, daily giveaways. Try yourself as a bookmaker. Great lines. EGB.com, more than just a bookmaker. So, welcome back, and always, as always, we'll take a look at these player cams to see anybody, uh, any emotion being shown here by the players. 
A bit of yawning going here, on here for Cybercats, but apart from that, everybody looks serious. They're looking ready to get into it. And we'll see here in game number two if Cybercats can pull this one back. Um, yeah, but again, I think this is going to be a really close match. I, I'm kind of giving Cybercats the edge because, again, I've seen what they can do. And Team Sexy, it, they've got the momentum coming into this, so I, I don't think there's much between the two teams. Sexy may be having a little bit of an edge coming into this, but I would just like to see Cybercats win it. You'll pull it, push it to a, a third game in the series. So let's see. No one really starting off aggressively here on, on either side either. Alberca, he's not skilled anything up just yet. Doesn't look like he wants to go for that hook right off the bat. Might actually, with Force Majora, actually getting the, the dual breath out. The battle begins. Oh. Bottom lane, he actually does go for the hook. Gonna miss it now as well, and he will still be able to get the bounty. Comes up a little bit too early here to get the, the drag back in on that bounty run. And... Okay, so he is gonna go for the hook level one. I thought he might have just gone for the rot. Especially, I mean, I, I assume the Beastmaster's not, not skilled anything up just yet. So odds between the two teams, again, not much in it between the two of them. Team Sexy coming in as the favourites, but not by a long shot. And Cybercats with the full, yeah, they do have this full potential to come back into game number two. Um, bottom lane, Jesu could suffer a little bit, but again, kill potential, if they have that good luck down from till the end with the frost blast as well as assist gaze it's going to be around level three or level four where this aggression can peak from the side of team sexy because you're going to have a couple of points into the essence shift the the dark pack for burst damage as well as the pounce and until the end it's going to have a point into the the frost blast the 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 frost armor as well as the sinister gaze and then yeah if you get the jump onto jess it's gonna be really hard to get himself out of that one the telekinesis might help a little bit but in the early stages, we'll see what's going to be going on in this top lane here. Nine class being harassed up by force. Going to be pushed right back the hook. It doesn't connect. Now the dual breath though, Jess. Does he still, uh, excuse me, force major, does he still get the kill into nine class? Axes will fly through. Nine class gets pretty darn low. Jess on the bottom lane again, taking some harass coming out from the lich. Until the end. Just salving himself up back to full health here. Jess just catches the end of that salve. But yeah, the damage onto DK Fogus. Yes, who does he want to try and tra trade these essence shifts off as well? Level 2. So he does have the pounce coming through now. And I wonder if they do go for it once this Lich hits level 2. Maybe goes for the point into the Sinister Gaze. Jess gets his D-Ward. I think it was just, just in on the corner though as well. It was. So top lane, Alberka going to be run down. A lot of frost coming out from Nefrit. Nefrit, one Go point in the inner on. beast, one point in the wild axes. We are back on the bottom lane. Again, level two here for the Lich. What What's he skilling up? He might hold the point until level three, you know. Because if Jesu gets gone on, um, he's going to have that frost shield available. But if they do want to get aggressive with the sinister gaze, so it doesn't look like for the minute till the end is going to hold this point. Mid lane, not really spoke a lot about this mid lane, but Moonlight once again taking a lot for us coming out from Chira. And Chira just completely opting to avoid the shrapnel, going in instead for the take aim as well as the headshot. And Moonlight's being punished by this phys physical damage. Even with the inner fire, Huskar can't really get in close. If he does try and get in close to punish, Chira just pops that take aim active, gets the constant headshots off on him. And Moonlight, yeah, he might not go down in this lane, but Chira's going to be keeping him low. And once that assassinate comes out, it's going to be a whole lot of damage. And Moonlight, I don't know if it's going to be enough to keep him alive here, even with the one point into the, the Berserker's Blood so far. You can see that he's just trying to go for the Inner Fire for the last hits to get the damage onto the creeps. So, top lane, Alberka. Ooh, did they get this kill onto the Pudge? The Pudge is going to pretty down low. Has to hide underneath the Tier 1 Tower here. He is being punished in the lane. Beastmaster not going for the balls. You know if the balls come out, especially with two points into the rot, our Burka will suffer. Uh, the, the damage on the balls, it's, it's too much at the minute with the dual breath, the liquid fire, as well as that rot, and he can't summon them just yet. So Nefre just holding off for now. Nine class going to take some harass. Chira, he actually gets the first blood onto Moonlight. Bottom lane as well. It's going to be low. There's action all over the map here. Until the end, has to get himself away from the doom as well. 
And yeah, level two, he did opt for the point in the frost shield here Radiance on the Lich. Under Disruptor. Just has to hold himself back. Again, the liquid fire is stacking up. Force actually might be able to get the solo kill here onto Nine Glass. Nine's going to go down. The glimpse comes through. The damage onto Alberca, though. Neferit looking for one more right click. Can he get himself away? He can't. So Neferit, even though with Nine Glass going down, will still get the kill onto Alberca. Leaves Force in the lane solo for a little bit, which isn't... I mean, you've lost your carriage. So that, that is pretty bad. But the Jakiro getting some solo experience. Not awful. Especially when you do want to be throwing this Horas out. And we'll see level 4 if Beastmaster now is going to scale up into the point, into the boars. I mean, again, the hook. Yeah, he's going to pick up the first level on the boss, but Moonlight has to move himself into jungle. Look at the stacks already here. We're not even five minutes into this game. And Sniper, he's forced Moonlight off the lane. So we'll see how the Sniper wants to play this. Uh, whether he's going to try and hunt down onto the, the Husker, but you've got to be careful if you do. Because you don't have any wards near for it. He's going to be chased down now. The damage coming through. Uh, they're going to be able to claim the kill onto the Beastmaster. Beastmaster, he's trying. He's trying to run himself away. The axes fly through, but for it. He will go down. Alberka is going to be able to get the kill onto the Fudge. Ice Path, though, it connects onto the Disruptor. And once again, the Jakiro may be looking to set up a hook for the Pudge. Glimpse comes out onto Force. Force is going to get pretty darn low. Out of mana now as well. Has those sticks. But Nine Class comes in the hook into the rock. Great bait mate coming through from Force. He does get low, but Alberka gets the kill. Sets it up four kills to one already in this game here for Cybercats. It's looking a little bit rough here for the side of Team Sexy. Just, just a wee bit rough. The sniper wants to be building into the Dragonlance now. Only going for the one Wraith Band. Um, very fine. Not even the one to come out, it doesn't look like. And I suppose when the Husker has already moved himself away. Oh, the ward. It does see where Moonlight is. Right click Shrapnel slow down onto Moonlight. Moonlight can he get himself away. The right clicks come through with his haste. The chase down comes out. The glimpse is going to be here for Chira. Chira just says, yeah, time, mate. Gets me back to the lane that little bit quicker. Even with the haste going, every help in hand is going to be a benefit for him. Bottom lane till the end. DK Focus gets the damage. Now Jesu has to retreat now as well. Level 4 on the Slark, but level 5 on the Doom. And Doom... He's, yeah, once that 6 comes out, they are going to be able to get aggressive onto Jesu, and Jesu hanging around low as well. He's not going to be closer to the 6 than Fogus, so Fogus will have that Doom up. Mid lane comes out, 9 class, dual breath will be here. Moonlight can get himself away from this one, Chira. There's going to be a lot of damage, and Chira once again helping get the kill onto Moonlight. This time the Husker will not work out. In fact, is it going to be all 3? It is! Chira on the killing spree, so is Force Major. And you can see the smiles on Chira's face there. Force, he's giving it business, like, you know, not and not letting any emotions show. Completely stoic. But Chira, you know, having a proper giggle. And all three cores on the side of Cybercats rocking the top of the net worth chart. Oh, DK Fogus disconnecting. Maybe he's trying to give Team Sexy a chance here in the second game. But yeah, Sniper going for the two points into the headshot, the one point into the take aim, and then just maxing out the shrapnel. Just to put the... the excuse me. <laughs> to keep yourself away from the Husker and then put the harass onto him from a distance. You know, it does really seem like it's paying off. Too early in the day for me to be messing up like that. We've still got another series to come after this as well. But if Cybercats have their way, it means that, you know, that, that, that second series might be starting a little bit later. There's Alberka. Again, how's this Pudge looking? Is it... Uh, what's his courier? It looks like he's just sticking with the Ring of Health. Maybe even going into a pipe. But the Ags is being queued up. Not seeing... Yeah, no, it, it doesn't look like it's going to be the Vanguard here for Alberka right off the bat. He's got that Ring of Health. He's got himself a casual cloak. The Glimpse comes in now. Just pushing Alberka back. Spotted by the Hook. Maybe Alberka thinks it's going to be some vision. You know, some wards being down. The Hook comes through, but Nine Class able to juke it off. Now the Ice Path comes through, though. Alberka, the damage with the Rod running him down. Nefret has the Rod if he wants to use it, but at Nine Class, he's still going to go down. And Pudge picking up a really easy kill with the help of his Jakiro in the lane. 
Hero gets himself an arcane ring. What is he going to be able to do with this? Moonlight still trying to defend his tier 1, but Sniper, look at how quickly he's bursting this one down here. Moonlight, Shrapnel comes through, and Moonlight just has to back himself away. Trying to go for the deny. Does take down the deny with the tier 1 tower, but it just opens up the map. Now you've got a Sniper. Okay, not the greatest roamer in the world. Maybe if you get something like a haste rune, you know, but whatever would that happen? Achira is going to open up with the TPs. Making a move towards the bottom lane now as well, till the end, level 4. Uh, level 6 onto the Jasu. But if this Doom comes out, assassinate for the vision started up early. On the Dark Pact in the trees, Jasu just gets himself away. And yeah, it looks like Cybercats. This is what I was seeing yesterday. They want to take some quick map control. So you want to be moving Chira around after he's taken the tier 1 tower in the mid lane. Jakiro moves himself right into the mid, looking for some XP, some gold for himself, getting some wards down as well. Meanwhile, Alberka, he seems fine solo. Oh, I, I get the idea. Yeah, he's trying to take down the center, but the roar comes out now. Three heroes to get the kill. It looks like Alberka, the glimpse right back. And it's going to be till the end here. H2O picks up that kill onto Alberka. Gives up a decent amount of gold. Radiance bottom Meanwhile, Moonlight in the mid lane. Can he get himself away? He has to pop the Furry Fire here as well. Trying to turn, maybe turn it around level 7. And he's not going to be able to go for the life break just yet because he needs that Berserker's Blood with the amount of harass coming out on the side of Cybercats. And yeah, it looks like it's going to be the armlet again. Uh, going to be about 125 gold away from the recipe. But not the greatest start here for the Huskar. In fact, going to be closer to the support than he is to the Sniper. Yeah, the hook from Alberka gets the kill onto the centaur. Um, Piano Sniper was at about 2k, over 2k gold away from the Huskar, and the Huskar is going to be closer to the Jakiro. So is the Slark, really. Then the Sniper, the Chira Jr. is absolutely running away with this game at the minute, and the Doom doing Doom things, get himself towards the Hand of Midas. He's got the two points to Devour as well. So, really... I wouldn't expect anything less. DK Fogus, that net worth will start to climb for the Doom as well. And all of a sudden, Team Sexy, after a really great game one, just can't get the mojo back here to start off with in game number two. It's not over by a long shot. Absolutely not over by a long shot. In the second game, it's just, you know, they're having a tough time. It's rough for them to start off with this, this second game of the series. Ooh, bottom lane, they might actually be able to get the kill into the Doom, they do. And that's the combo that I was talking about, the sins to gaze into the pounce. They get the lockdown. They have the control, and Doom couldn't get his ultimate off there onto Jesu. They were able to get the kill, probably didn't even want to get it off. Because Jesu probably just carries on standing and right-clicking. Schlock. Tim got himself phase boots into the Echo Saber. A nice stack to come through here as well. Top lane, force. Uh, not gonna throw out the ice path after all. Nine class, looking for a rotation, just getting some wards down. Looking actually maybe to get a block off, because the Pudge hasn't left the lane yet. Really? Did he go back for the Vanguard? He didn't. Wants to go straight in towards this Aghanim Scepter. Yeah, the, the cloak he says is gonna be good, good enough. Doesn't want to be giving up that farm. To a, uh, a Vanguard, he, he might still go back for the Vanguard. In fact, no, with the cloak being here, this Ring of Health as well. I assume this is good with the pipe. Yeah, or at least the Hood of Defiance. Might even go in for the internal throughout. Chira, Ice Path, not going to connect. Chira gets the kill here. On to till the end, but top lane being pressured by the side of Cybercats. Alberka coming through. Again, just trying to do what he can with the creeps. He hooked the creep instead of the disruptor when they were trying to go for that after the connect field came up. But he will be able to put some pressure on. The glimpse comes out. Al Alberka won't be landing that hook anyway. While this is going on, though, again, the sniper just continues to push down the lane. It's going to go for the desolator here on the sniper. So we'll see. Is under Moonlight in the mid has to be careful. Three man rotation here, and the Huskar has to back himself away into the jungle. But, how's it looking? Nine class. I mean, Team Sexy looking to get themselves back in. If they can get another jump onto Fogus. Fogus now 
looking towards his BKB, so he doesn't want to be sinister gazed and killed off. Kira, though, takes down nine class. Can they go for any more? It looks like he's just going to try and take away the jungle from the side of Team Saxy. He's got himself the, the Master of Madness, like I said, going towards that Desolator next. It does amplify the tower taking potential. Um, coming up against the Slark as well, it's going to be nice on him. You know, you get the armor reduction because the Slark, a big armor hero. Or at least he wants to be. Going in towards... T is it going to be the Diffusal or Slark? Does he want to go back for the Ags? I've only got the Blade of Lacta queued up. Usually you do see the Ags coming out for the Slark. I think that's the one um, constant. Oh, the ward, it sees till the end. Coming up onto this, the Fade Bolt will be the Telkinesis. Maybe can't get in range till the end, though. The glimpse that was stolen, it gets the drag back now as well. Until the end's going to go down. Chain Frost trying to balance it around. Jess V. He just says, thank you very much. Takes the Frost Blast. Yeah, Chira Jr. picks himself up another kill in this game. 13-3 to for Cybercats. Top lane, they get the dive out. The roar comes through here now as well. The axes fly through. And Force Major can he get himself away from this one. Ice Path will be used as well as the Dual Breath. Trying to pop this tomato. But the scan comes out. Backlines, DK Focus. He's trying to get himself in the haste. It's going to be taken away from him. TP now. Nah. Ooh, he's going to be away from that now as well. But he might lose the supports. Nine Class is going to be slowed down. But he gets a glimpse away on Alberca. And Alberca could not get that hook off to get the kill. Chira Jr. has moved himself to the top already. Looking to take down after the Dragon Lance. And the, uh, the Desolator is going to be pretty darn close. About, what's that, 1,200 away? 1,100 away from picking this one up. And Chira, if he takes the tower, that will get him a little bit closer here now as well. The Frost Shield comes through from the Lich. And they don't overpressure it here on the side of Cybercats. Not looking to have this tower with a knight on them again. So Nefret moves himself up. Still going to the helm of the Overlord. Even with the Doom. I mean, what levels the Doom as well? The Doom is going to be able to get himself some easy levels as well with the Hand of Midas. So the extra XP to come through here. Moonlight wants that BKB. Or he got himself the Ogre Axe. He's going to be having Talbot to come out right after that as well. Or maybe not right after it. You know, Moonlight, he has been shut down a fur way. He's done a little bit of catching up. But, you know, he's still suffering here in the game. So, yeah, it is going to be the Heaven's Harbor to follow the BKB Dyer's here for the Husker. Is under attack. And what, you want to focus down the Sniper with that? Because apart from the Shrapnel and Assassinate... Is under attack. Yeah, a lot of the, the power potential. Speaking about the power potential here with Shichira Jr., even with the glimpse, was still able to get the kill. Bottom lane. Do you want to try and go into Jesse? Jesse's going to run himself away from this one. Steals the Dark Pact, I do believe, though. Yes, so the Doom. I mean, it's still not being used here till the end. It's going to be run down. Chain Frost bounces around, but DK Focus, he pops the BKB. And the Scorched Earth doesn't even need to use the Doom here. As DK Focus just runs down till the end. Chain Frost bouncing, but the BKB was there. And yet Doom he doesn't even need to deign to waste his ultimate here on the Lich. Does Moonlight just get to kill into Force Major? Okay. Okay. So a good kill for Team Sexy. And they should be able to take a tower off this now as well. <laughs> they were taking a tower anyways, it looks like. It was one last hit away from going down. As the Desolator comes out for the Sniper, the Sniper wants to go back for the Hurricane Pike. Chira, no smiles here. Back to being super serious. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And what does he want to go for after the Dragonlance? I mean, he's being greedy at the minute because he can be going towards the Hurricane Pike first. But I imagine it's going to be the BKB after this here for the Sniper. Because, yeah, you're what? 7 0 and 2. You're not really being contested. You're not being shut down. Making some great rotations. So you can get greedy with the Hurricane Pike. It's the Beastmaster just continues to pressure the top lane. But Alberka, he's, he's not going to be here. He's got himself the axe. Okay, so that's going to help his farm. I'm going to go towards the blink as well. Did he get the lockdown? He might be able to get the kill onto the Yukiro stat. So going to be used. TP in though. But meanwhile, they get the drag back. Alberka gets the hook onto Moonlight. And does secure the dismember kill there. Huskar, nothing he could do. I think that was his BKB flying out as well. No, he has it. And has another Ogrex as well. 
And even it wasn't enough to keep him alive. The dismember would have gone through the BKB anyway. Class to drag back. Gets that hook off the assassinate coming out. Nine class. He's gonna go down. Chira gets his eighth on the board. Raw gets used here. Did he get the kill onto the pudge? Jesu with the essence shift has to use the shadow dance. And actually does want to go back for the mage flare. So it does have that Aghanim Scepter, has those long range pounces. Um, and it will be the Mage Slayer to come out next. So might be able to close the gap on the sniper with these pounces here after all. I wonder if he goes in for a Lincolns. Because what have you got, really? The Dismember, the Assassinate, and the Doom. Uh, Telekinesis and some Fade Wall. Okay, th th there's a few spells that might not be too bad if you're going for a Lincolns here on the Slark before the BKB. You all just V. He's just continuing to do what he can here as the Rubik. Does he want to be, be getting caught out solo? Shira. Yeah. Still going to go towards the Hurricane Pike. Um, Raw is on cooldown for the next 35 seconds. But we'll see if you want to continue yes, pushing out this top lane here on the side of Team Sexy. Yes. Team Sexy against only 7k after getting 12 kills ahead here, Cybercats. It's only a 7k net worth lead here in terms of gold. So we will see. You're in there for it. Uh, got his helm on the Overlord, but again, that Doom going to be close to the level. Th he's level 13 now, so level 15. I would expect to see the uh, Devourer can target Ancients. Just to try and deal with the Helm of the Overlord that comes out from the Beastmaster. And Team Sexy, what can they do? You can see that they're look, gonna look for an, in, an, an invade here. Special Rush Array comes out. Oh, Burke, they have the lockdown. He misses the hook, though. He might have that vision. Do they want to? No, Chira Jr. is gonna be close. I don't want to overcommit. The Beastmaster being... Oh, is he just in the vision? He's going to be just in the vision of this ward. It's Jess who just continues the, the free farm on the bottom lane. Doom will be here. Uh, DK Fogus. He has his ultimate up as well in 20 seconds. So the Slark can't get too out of position. As he does get the Mage Slayer out though. Mm. Oh, Even finding the Arcane Rune. Did he just want to go with the Roche? Moonlight's going to be in here. Yeah, no, they just want to go in. And it looks like... Oh, does he know Force? No, he's popping that Ice Path down to try and get the d ward. While this is going on, though, Team Sexy right into the Roche Pit. And it looks like Moonlight is going to be able to give himself an Aegis. We want to get something off the back of this. It looks like they are drawing the battle lines on the map. Coming through from the Beastmaster. So Nefrit saying, we're going to wrap around. We're either going to push down this Tier 2 or we're going to take a fight with the Aegis. Yeah, Huskar, four and a half minutes now on this Aegis. What can they do with this? Maybe this is the open that they need to get themselves back into the game. Cybercats, though, they are grouping up a four-man smoke to come out. Maybe trying to hunt onto... onto the Slark. But Jesu grouping up with the rest of his team. So smoke on smoke action. Who's he going to break? Moonlight, does he want to go for the dive in here? He might find out Shira. The kinetic field will be here now as well. Static Storm will be used, but he gets that Hurricane Pike off the immediate push out. And Sniper's is going to be away from this one. The drive back with that glimpse. They get the kill onto Shira. He gives up over a thousand gold to Jesu. And that's not who you want to be giving up to. You don't want to be giving it up to it anyway. But you give it up to the Slark. The Pounce comes in. He gets two. And now they're going to be able to even get a tier two out of this as well. They just need to let this Creeps push in a little bit further. And can they go for more? They have two heroes dead on the side of Cybercat, so Jesu and his team. Look at the pressure of the tier 2. Do they even want to go onto and maybe start to chip down onto that tier 3 tower? They'll find out now. As again, no sniper for the next 17 seconds. No Jikiro for the next 10. With those two heroes up, you have some great base defense. With the shrapnel as well as the dual breath, the, the ice path coming out without them though. It looks like Moonlight, he's going to step up. He's not going to be able to break the base. You know, the Jakiro is going to go coming back here. But, are they going to glimpse back? What is it going to be? It's only in the base. So, Doom not really TPing in to defend this. So, it does get a little bit of time here for Moonlight to get the damage onto the tier 3. But again, they don't break this base. 
But with the Aegis, it looks like Team Sexy in control. They want the tier one, they want the tier two tower in the mid lane now. This lock, how's he looking? His courier's in. Uh, I don't know why his courier's over there. He's got the. The Mithril Hammer. Does he want to go in for a BKB here on the Slark? Where's Harry when you need him? I don't read Cyrillic. Okay, they get the go. Maybe just like a Discord issue or something. The go, but Team Sexy. Okay, they're, they're taking the time. Maybe going for, you know, having a bit of a stretch. <laughs> and she was like, go, go. Go on, guys. You want to go? Uh, BS Lark, maybe going in towards this BKB. He's got the, the Mithril Hammer queued up. Shard ha is available to his team as well. So if they do want to fight into this one, they, they have that second, um, well, at least Jasu has that second protection and the team protection coming out now from the Depth Shroud. Okay, not sure what's going on on Team Sexy's side that they don't want to start it up straight away. Um, just waiting here. Let's take a look at the items while we do wait out this pause. So Moonlight, he does have the Heaven's Harbor coming out with his BKB. Aegis is still there for the next couple of minutes as well. Uh, Jesu, Agnims is up. He's going towards the Mage Slayer. The Shard is a bit... He's got that Shard already. Uh, till the end. Not got a whole lot of nothing here. At least Nine Class has that four staff. You know, it's just going to be the regen boots here for this the the Lich. Buying out on the Tome of Knowledge as well. No Shard. Okay, we get the go. Nope, pause. <laughs> Chira, what's going on, mate? Are we ready? Yeah, Sniper now, he's going to go back towards the BKB. So, after picking up the Desolator, the Hurricane Pike, um, I talked about it, he could get greedy because he, he got he had the... Um, oh, is the, the fix in the webcam. Okay. Um... Yeah, he could get greedy because he wasn't really being hunted down. He wasn't really being engaged upon. But we saw there in that last fight, you know, if he doesn't have the BKB, he gets glimpsed, even with the Hurricane Pike coming out, he gets glimpsed right back into the waiting arms. And Huskar, he just was able to chip him down and get the kill into Jira. And Jesu, I think it was, that got the final blow. Got himself... Yeah, it was over 1,000 gold. 718 plus 452. So, close to nearly 1,200 gold at... Yeah, 1,200. Given being, being given up by the sniper. Beastmaster, BKB. Still going to be... What's that? About 1,700 away from picking that one up. But the Beastmaster's having a really good time. Even with the Doom, the Doom should be level 15 now. You know, level 14, but Hand of Midas comes up in 24 seconds. Uh, dealing with these camps as well. So we get the go from there for it. They are ready. Yeah, DK Fogus, he wants to get himself towards that level 15. Helm of the Overlord is out for the Beastmaster, but he is going to be losing those creeps to the Devourer. Suppose if you time it right, though. Um, as long as you have the Helm of the Overlord on cooldown. What's the cooldown on that? I don't play Beastmaster. I don't know. 45 seconds. So, oh, they're getting glimpsed back now as well. The static on the raw. They've got the kill onto Alberka. Just caught out of position. They might even be able to go for more onto this. Do they want to go for the chase down Moonlight using his BKB? Helping him get the kill onto Alberka. Great dive in. Jesse just hanging off to the side. So yeah, now, Kinesi Field comes out. Force Major, is he in trouble? Jesu gets that pounce off. And Force, he's going to go down now as well. Telkinesis trying to get the save. It's going to be the Shadow Dance as well as the Dark Pack coming through. And Focus wasn't able to get the stomp. So now, even with the Doom onto Jesu, do they have enough to keep Jesu alive? He's trying to retreat. And that Doom is going to be up halfway through. But it looks like he might be able to get himself away from this one. The Aegis will pop. Moonlight gets the kill onto Jess V. And he might go for even more Ice Path now as well. DK Focus, with his own BKB, he's going to be down. And Moonlight, he wants to dive in with the Life Break. And DK Focus gets low. The buyback comes out from the roof. It looks like 
Team Sexy going to be able to disengage all till the end, though. The Assassinate will finish the kill onto the Lich. Nine class goes down. A couple of sacrificial lambs as the cause will be able to get the retreat. Yeah, Jasu gets himself away. The Doom was off and he's back to full health. And it looks like, actually, Cybercats, do they want to chase onto this? <laughs> Nefrit doesn't have a blink, so he has to walk himself away the old-fashioned way. So let's take a look, though. Two buybacks coming out from both supports on the side of Cybercats. They did lose three with the Aegis on the side of Team Sexy, but they lost them on the die side of the map. They they even, again, forced out a couple of buybacks. So that was a great fight, and Team Sexy just bailed after it. Okay, the support stuck around to, to take the aggro to make sure the cores get out. It's not a long respawn on the cores either. So well worth the sacrifice. And even from taking down two supports, Cybercat's not going to be able to get anything from that. Because, well, they lost it on the die. Well, they, you know, the fight went on the die side of the map. And again, with these quick respawns, by the time they do get themselves over to the objectives, everybody has respawned. So they just create a little bit of space for themselves to find the farm. Looking to get the next set of items in here. Pudge does have that BKB available to him. Looking fresh. Yeah, Doom level 15. So we can devour those Ancients. Being on a 60 second cooldown as well. By the time the Beastmaster gets himself over to one of the Ancient Camps to, to regain it, that devour is going to be off cooldown. If he goes in, in for the Octarine Core as well, it looks like it's going to be the Lotus Orb first here for the Doom. But if he gets the Octarine Core at some point, that's going to be a great reduction. And it's going to... Be, it's not going to be a one-for-one one in terms of the Dominate and the Devour, but it's going to be pretty darn close. Oh, they might be able to get the jump on the DK Focus, though. There's going to be Invis coming through now, and yeah, the Pounce comes out. Since the Gaze, they've got the lockdown. DK Focus, I think he even popped his BKB. He did. He still gets killed off. Alberka, mate, you're not full health. And Jesu, that dragon from the hook. Does he want to try and go for the chase down onto the Pudge? Looks like not. Uh, Alberka, though, was on half health. Had his own BKB if he needed it. Hook comes out. Kinetic field will be used. As the Beastmaster takes the outpost. Yeah, uh, I mean, Cybercats has some great control Radiant over this game. Chira picking attack. up kills after kills after kills. And all of a sudden, uh, Team Sexy, after a good couple of fights, they find themselves right back in this game. Kinetic field. Maybe trying to force out a BKB here from the Pudge. And what can they do? The Doom's going to be respawning. He's got his BKB up in 38 seconds as well. Maybe looking for a little bit of wrench with the Blink Dagger onto the Lich. The Lich has to run himself away. No Chain Frost available either. But yeah, the BKBs, it comes up with the Sniper and the Slark at the same time. So we'll see. If now those BKBs are out for the cause, all three cores on the side of Sabcats, whether they want to try and hit the timing with these. You know, they do have to wait for the Dooms to come off cooldown. It will be there in six seconds. They're going to try and go for a smoke, though. Or oh, it might not be quick enough to get the glimpse back. They push back the Doom. BKB now available to him. Yeah, Chira. I mean, Roche can be a minute. It might be longer. There's still, like, a, a max of three minutes that can be added on. But for the most part, Roshan can be back up in the next minute or so. So this is why you see Team Sexy looking around the Radiant Triangle, looking around the dire side of the jungle, just looking to protect this area because this is the next big objective. And if they get this, they might be able to take a fight, force through a, a Tier 3 tower because the Tier 3 tower, don't forget, down to half health on the top lane. The Beastmaster, how's his time is looking? He's got his BKB, Helm of the Overlord coming out, just using the Ancient Black Dragon to push this one out. And maybe trying to force a TP back here now as well. Roche, let's see, 26 seconds at least before the big man's back up. Force. In the mid lane, there's a wraparound without the smoke coming out from Cybercats. No vision to see them there. I, again, the Hawk won't be close, but this tier 3 tower slowly being sieged down by the Beastmaster. And let's see, 5 seconds here on the clock on Roche. It's going to force back two TPs. Going to be Chira as well as Alberka. So Nefrit probably looks for the leave, but he did a lot of damage here to that tier 3 tower. Yeah, looks for the TP out. Roche, though, it is going to be the long one. Two and a half minutes before the big man's back. Yeah, this is where Team Sexy want to be winning the next fight, which turns me that DK Fogus on the bottom lane. 
He's going to be given a little bit of space and time to find his next item. And it is going to be the Octarine Core now as well. After that low to wall, he might try and make a move of the Slark. Does he get the dive away? He does. Jesu backed up by Moonlight. The hook, it doesn't connect. The kinetic field comes out. Team Sex are going to be able to reset, get themselves away. Did they come back into this now as well? DK Focus, he gets the blink in, but Doom, he's going to be able to use his BKB. Five, nine class goes down. The Raw comes out, though, onto the Doom through the BKB. And now the Life Break. Do they get the damage onto DK Focus? DK Focus, he's going to get low. Gets the Doom off onto Jesu once again, but they've got the kill onto DK Focus. Alberka comes in now with this dismember. Can they get the kill onto Jesu with this Doom? It is taking him down. He looks like he might go down. No! The Doom, it's not going to be enough to take him down. And they're winning a fight despite the lockdown now. Force Major has to go for the TP. Chira, he pops his BKB. He's going to try and stand his ground. He gets the kill. The reset comes through from Jasu. Chira Jr. with the Hurricane Pike chase down. Now that BKB, it will be worn off. The glint comes out. And Chira into the waiting arms of Jasu. They take down four. That was looking like a really good engagement with the Doom coming out on the slot here as well. But all of a sudden, Team Sexy, they come in, they turn it around, and four heroes down on the side of Cybercats with no buybacks. That's the most important part. You've not got a punch for 17 seconds, no sniper for 50 seconds. Doom will be coming back alive, but you're going to be able to break this tier 3 tower. Maybe even put pressure onto the racks here with the Ancient coming in onto this, and then back yourself away for Roche. So they're going to try and buy some time with the Fortification. But the creeps will continue to push in on the next wave. DK Focus, you've got to be so, so careful you don't get caught out solo, even on your high ground. And everybody back from the side of Team Sexy. So, Roshan going to be 30 seconds away. Sniper will be Eyes back alive. For the dead. By the time Rosh respawns. But again, this is what you're seeing from Team Sexy. They, they want this Rosh as the next objective. They do a little bit of damage again to the T3 tower in the top lane. Scan comes out from the Dire, but a little bit too early here. Yeah, so Sniper's back. There's going to be the four-man smoke and nothing for the Sniper to TP to. Does he have the Boots of Travel? He doesn't. So just TPs himself towards the Tier 2 Tower. Big rap coming from Cybercats. Smoke's going to break. Onto Alberka. Do they get a jump in? The Raw is available. The Glimpse comes out. Onto Alberka now. The Pounce comes through. Forces out his BKB. What's that doing? That doing still 12 seconds away. The Raw. Onto the Sniper. The Sniper's going to get caught out. Static Storm as well. The Raw was stolen. It doesn't matter. Moonlight. He's going to be able to get the kill with Jesu. Onto Kira Jr. Dismember on the back lines. But he's going to be left. One versus well, two versus three now. Till the end. Can he get himself away? The Chain Frost. It does bounce around. And Alberka will still be alive. The Doom comes out. Jesu already got that BKB away. So he's going to be able to walk himself away from this one. DK Focus needs to run. But Moonlight, he wants to get the dive in. Life Break comes out onto Force. Force with the TP. Telekinesis. They still get the kill and Force will go down. Three for two. Now Moonlight will be able to move himself into the Roche Pit. In fact, Jesu, after Doom was off, is he hunting? He might find Jess. Jess, he pops that smoke. Was that extra pounce? It's going to be three seconds away. The bullwhip comes out. Jess in the trees. But it looks like Jess, he wants to get the chase down. And he does. He finds him here now as well. Was that pounce? Even going to use the shadow dance for this to make sure he can't be telekinesis. But Jess has the shard. No, he pounces over him. Jess can get himself away from this one. Has that TP in the trees. The damage over the pounce comes back in. The second pounce. It will be there. And even after all this time, they get the kill onto the Rubik. They're going to be able to get the kill onto Roche now as well. That's going to be a shard being dropped for him. Four heroes dead once again. Moonlight, he gets the Aegis, even a double damage room waiting for him outside of the pit. And Jess, Jessu, excuse me, it's going to be the one to pick this one up. Dyer's so now, tower is under attack. Team Sexy back in the lead, a 4k net worth lead here. Four kills behind though, and an outpost in their name. What can they do? Slark going towards Ascari. Nefrit looking to push the base in with his ancient creep now, this ancient ice shaman. They're winning the fight, so there's no doom for the next 42 as well. And that fight from the side of Team Sexy, they want to force it out now. With an Aegis, they know the doom's down. They've got all the BKBs up, I do believe. Yeah, all the BKBs are up. So we'll see what they're going to be able to do. Do they want to try and go for that glimpse back play? Yeah, this Doom's still 20 seconds out. So how can Cybercats protect this base? The Ancient pushes in. They don't have a fortification either. So they're going to lose the Tier 3. The racks will be open in the Moonlight. He wants to come in. He has his Shard. Did he... Yeah, because it was already Shard up. So it's going to be Husker that claims that one now as well. And Beastmaster may be looking for that Shard after the Hex. But he does want that Hex to come out sometime soon. 
Gonna have enough gold for the Mystic Staff in about, well, right at the... And he gets a couple of kills onto the creeps. But the smoke comes out from Team Sexy. Where can they go with this? Maybe look into Alberk. Alberk is out the base. He's going to be out solo now as well. The Glimpse Pack comes in. Do they have the lockdown, the Sinister Gaze? But it looks like Pudge. Yeah, they're going to go for the tier 2. So just putting the threat of God here in Alberk. Just letting them know that they're giving them a warning shot. Just right over the shoulder to say, Alberk, you were lucky this time. But next time, ah uh ah, -uh, we aren't going to be so generous. There's a disruptor building towards that Ag Scepter here as well. Was there a Philosopher's Stone on the side of... There wasn't. So he's not going to get that gold boost here on the side of Team Sexy. There wasn't one out for the side of Cybercats here as well. Oh, huh, interesting. One tier one tower stands and Cybercats, they're going to make a beeline towards it in a smoked fashion here. But Team Sexy, they will be scanned. Alberka's going to be seen. Did they get the pants off to Alberka? Has that BKB Jesu. Maybe trying to force it out the hook. It won't connect, but he do get the dragon onto Moonlight. This is not the target you wanted now as well. They do get a little bit of control here with the Ice Path. Moonlight, he's saving that BKB. The jump onto the back line. So Jira Jr., the pounce comes in. He pops that BKB. The force that could use here now as well, but the roar comes out. They get the kill onto the sniper. They can go for more. Alberka, he has to pop his own BKB. As he get the lockdown onto the Jakiro, Jakiro can't get himself away. Alberka blinks himself out his BKB will be worn off. No, he walks himself back in. He walks himself back in. You get the kill. The GG is going to be called here. Team Sexy, they take the first series of Division 2 in an impressive fashion here. Even after a great fight back, Cybercats in control. And you can see, you know, the faces coming out from side the Cybercats. They're not happy with this one. Um, yeah, this second game. Let's take a look at the graph once it loads up because they were in control, Cybercats, early on. It was swinging in their favor. Um, and all of a sudden, it was about the 25-minute mark after that Roshan goes down. After Team Sexy get a great fight, it just skyrockets all the way back up in favor of the side of Team Sexy. Moonlight got absolutely demolished in the lane as well by the Sniper. Um, didn't have a great time in the first game up against the Invoker, but this time around, Chira Jr. went something like, what was it, 10-0-2? before he even got picked off. But going for that late BKB might have cost him, and it, you know, it did swing it around a little bit once he got picked off, once he gave over that gold to, to Jesu as well. The BKB started to come out from Team Sexy, and Cybercats, they just couldn't survive through the, the onslaught that came through from Sexy after that. And Team Sexy, they will be taking the first victory here of Division 2. We take a look forward, though. There is going to be one more series to come here. It is going to be uh, Sigma YNT versus No Sorry coming up in... Well, it's going to be in about an hour. So we're going to be taking a, a longer break than usual. Um, we'll be back with the second series of the day here, getting through. But first, we're going to take a break, guys. So we'll see you in about an hour's time. Get yourself something to eat, something to drink. Uh, a quick stretch in there as well and get yourself back for Sigma YNT versus No Sorry. We'll see you after the break. <laughs> 